How the Grinch Stole Christmas has been a holiday classic for generations, so it wasn't too surprising when in 2000, a new rendition of the story would be released. But which characters in Whoville belong on Santa's nice list, and which ones deserve a lump of coal? Welcome to Wicked Binge. This is How the Grinch Stole Christmas, Naughty to Nice. As usual, we'll be starting with the most pure and noble character and working our way down. These characters are the good. Starting off our list, we have the gold medal of most good going to Cindy Lou Who. Cindy was always full of questions, which often got brushed off. Cindy's curiosity was seen as an inconvenience to many of the residents of Whoville. When the vote for Holiday Cheermeister came about, Cindy didn't hesitate to nominate the Grinch. She even spoke up against the mayor criticizing the idea and climbed Mount Crumpet herself to deliver the invitation. Cindy refused to simply accept that the Grinch was a bad person. <laughs> and took the time to ask about him from people he had known in order to better understand him. Even after the Grinch attempted to steal away Christmas, Cindy still sought him out, just so he wouldn't be alone on Christmas. Our silver medal of most good is a tied spot going to Clarnella and Rose Who. Clarnella and Rose were the two women who took in the Grinch when he was an infant. Despite him being far different from the other Whos, with his fondness for eating ceramic plates and his distaste for Christmas, Clarnella and Rose loved him wholeheartedly. When the Grinch returned to Whoville to receive his award for Holiday Cheermeister, Clarnella and Rose gifted their son with a homemade Christmas sweater. The only reason we decided to rank them second most good rather than giving them the top spot was because they essentially gave up on the idea of bringing the Grinch back home. When he climbed Mount Crumpet, they let him be alone, not knowing what else they could do for him. However, we did want to point out that even if Clarnella and Rose had asked for help, it would have been unlikely they would have gotten it, as the Grinch had been an outcast even in his youth. Taking their place as the bronze-ranked winner of most good, we have the Grinch himself. The Grinch thrived on causing mischief and confusion, but for the most part, his deeds were harmless. In the beginning of the film, we saw him disorganizing the mail and shoving into people as they rushed around to do their shopping. The Grinch! But while he labeled himself as terrifying, using the Who's fear to his advantage, the Grinch wasn't a terrible person. When Cindy Lou Who fell into the machinery, he did end up saving her, and of course he saved her at the end of the film when he realized all of his attempts at stopping the holiday from happening were in vain. The Grinch was also fair in how he assessed the holiday. At the mention of gifts and seeing Augustus trying to bribe Martha, it's a new car! He immediately dug into the people of Whoville, ridiculing them for putting so much into a time of year where most of it wound up in the trash. You see what I'm saying? In your garbage! This is made even more heartbreaking when you take into account a theory that's been circulating on the internet for a few years now, that Max had been one of the gifts that was thrown away. The Grinch wasn't an evil person. In truth, he was a kid trying to find his place and wound up being hurt in the process, which caused him to seek out isolation so as to avoid being hurt again. We can't blame him for reacting the way he did. It was completely unfair of the people of Whoville to treat him as an outcast simply because he looked different. and wasn't a complete sucker for Christmas. And we don't blame the Grinch at all for being reluctant to go back to Whoville. We will, however, award him the Wrath Medal, even though we totally understand his anger. After the Grinch, we have his pet dog, Max. Max was the loyal sidekick that always tried to get the Grinch to do the right thing. When Cindy fell into the machinery at the post office, Max had been the one to keep the Grinch from leaving, knowing that his owner would regret it if something actually happened to her. Max was also shown to actually be fond of the holiday season, dancing around to Christmas music. Are you having a holly jolly Christmas? In the end, when Cindy was in danger once again, Max also jumped into action to help her. As we mentioned in the previous listing, there is a chance that Max decided to become loyal to the Grinch after his first family had literally thrown him away, and we feel it's worth mentioning this theory as it really does explain the depth of their relationship. Max clearly believed his owner to be a good person at heart, and while Max disagreed with the idea of ruining Christmas, he did still help his owner build the sleigh and sneak around Whoville. Next on our list is Cindy's father, Lulu Who. 
Lou was always shown as a patient man. Whether he was trying his best to answer all of his daughter's questions about the Grinch and Christmas, or when he was doing his best to help his wife gather Christmas lights, Lou was always rolling with the punches. Though Lou was hesitant to encourage Cindy's fixation on why the Grinch hated Christmas, Lou defended her when Augustus tried shaming her before the whole town. He was proud of his daughter for standing up for what she thought was right. Honey, I am so proud of you. This was made all the more impactful when we take into account that Lou generally let people talk to him however they pleased. Lou was already shown to not want to gain the mayor's wrath when his sons Drew and Stu claimed they came across the Grinch. This was then shown later when Lou was clearly nervous about letting Cindy nominate the Grinch for holiday cheermeister. So when he decided to step in and speak in Cindy's defense, She's my child. And she happens to be right, by the way. It was a very sweet moment between a father and daughter. Following is the love interest in the film, Martha May Hoovier. As a child, we learned that she was in the same class as the Grinch and took quite a liking to him, which will earn her the Lust Medal. She didn't mind that he was different from all the other Who's. However, Martha had also been too afraid to defend the Grinch after his outburst. Though it was clear that she regretted letting him leave, Martha was more concerned with fitting in and moving on with her life. She was easily impressed by the more lavish things in life, and Augustus certainly used that to his advantage when trying to win her over. In the end, Martha was finally able to stand by the Grinch and reject Augustus's proposal. My heart belongs to someone else. Hmm? It was nice to see her finally decide that being with the person she cared for was more important than fitting into the standards she had been taught. We also want to give Martha props for being the only kid in the class to not laugh at or mock the Grinch when his shaving attempt was revealed. When even the teacher was snickering in amusement, Martha was shown angrily glaring at her peers for their cruelty and immaturity. It would have been interesting to see what would have happened had she been the one to seek out the Grinch, rather than Cindy Lou Who. It was obvious that Martha had at least entertained the idea at some point by the way she behaved and spoke during the interview. With that said, we've arrived at the neutral territory. These characters fall in the gray area. Our next ranking goes to Officer Holyhan. This officer was a very minor role in the film, and we had to place him as the most purely neutral in all the cast. Yes, Holyhan had his doubts about letting the Grinch return to Whoville. And yes, he had been among the many Whoville residents upset that everything they worked for was stolen in the night. I get it. I'm the Grinch that stole Christmas. But Officer Holyhan also accepted that the Grinch was remorseful for his actions and so refused to arrest him. After all, the Grinch not only returned everything he took, but he saved Cindy's life. Taking the next spot on our list is Betty Lou Who, Cindy's mother. Betty was shown to be far more concerned about the glamour of winning a Christmas lighting contest than anything else. You have to admire the dedication it took to acquire every single light in the house, rig them up in a fashionable way around the outside of their home, all in her pajamas no less. But this same behavior is what knocked her down a few points in our ranking. Is this the chandelier from the dining room? It's all for the cause, dear. After all, winter is a season where it gets dark early. Having your children wandering around the house in the dark or with candles is not the best solution just because you want to impress the neighborhood. Following is another tied spot with Stu Lu Hu and Drew Lu Hu. Stu and Drew were the sons of Betty and Lu Lu Hu, but they weren't really a factor for much of the movie. Stu and Drew earned their place in the neutral rankings for how they decided to set up the story. Being teenagers, they of course thought it would be a great idea to drag their girlfriends up Mount Crumpet in order to find the Grinch. Can I touch it? Touch the door. Do it for me, Stu. This wasn't the level of impressive that they thought it would be. Instead, they all ran away in fear, with Stu and Drew immediately putting the town of Whoville in a state of unrest when they explained what happened. As we stated before, though, they were dumb teenage boys, which earns them the Darwin Medal, and trying to impress their dates wasn't a bad idea exactly. It was just poorly executed. After all, their younger sister managed to find the Grinch and talk to him perfectly fine kids today. So desensitized by movies and television. Finally, we've reached the dark side. These characters are the bad and the evil. The bronze medal of most evil goes to the mayor's assistant, Hubris. Hubris had been a lackey for Augustus ever since they were children. Hubris was the typical suck-up type of character that is fairly common in children and family content. 
He spent his time lavishing Mayor Augustus with compliments and flattery in order to stay in good graces and get recognized around the community as an important figure. Hubris also took the time to help with gaining all the expensive and flashy gifts Augustus wanted to use to impress Martha. Hubris sat by when Augustus spent his time targeting the Grinch back when they were kids. When Cindy was going around interviewing everyone, Hubris defended Augustus's actions by pointing out that the Grinch was different from everyone else, as if that alone warranted tormenting a kid to the point of running away. Had Hubris been less afraid of being an individual and stood up for himself, he might have been able to earn a spot in our gray zone. Our silver medal for most evil goes to Miss Ruhu. This ranking may cause some conflict, but hear out our reasoning. Miss May Ru was not only the Grinch's teacher back when he was a child, but she was also Cindy's teacher, which meant a few things. First, that the people of Whoville age incredibly well. Second, that her reluctance to entertain Cindy's doubt and questions likely stemmed from the fact that she didn't want a repeat of what happened with the Grinch. However, it was Miss Ruhu's time with the Grinch as her student that earned her such a low spot on our list. We understand that teachers have a lot on their plates and that it would be impossible to keep track of what every student was doing all the time. However, there was no possible way she didn't notice how the Grinch was being treated in her classroom. From Clarnella and Rose's accounts of what happened, they had no idea what had been occurring in that classroom. And if Miss Ruhu had indeed witnessed some of this bullying and mistreatment, she had an obligation to make Clarnella and Rose aware of it. Later on during the party, when the Grinch had given his gift to Martha, Miss Ruhu prodded at him to show his face despite his clear embarrassment. Put the book down. When the children then burst out laughing at him, triggering his outburst, Miss Ruhu did nothing to stop them. In fact, she also showed herself to be amused at how he looked after his shaving attempt. While Miss Ruhu was trying to be kind and patient when addressing him, we still don't get how she didn't notice him hiding in the coats until the gift exchange. She also didn't scold the children from mocking the Grinch's homemade gift, which was also a bad call. Finally, our gold medal of most evil in Whoville is Mayor Augustus Mayhu. While the Grinch was labeled the antagonist in the original story, Augustus was clearly the villain in this version. Even as a kid, Augustus was very much the jealous and boasting type. This earns him the Envy Medal. And that's not all. His ego is also more than worthy of the Pride Medal. He hated not getting his way. When the Grinch was starting to warm up to celebrating Christmas and was impressing Martha, Augustus made it his mission to destroy the Grinch's confidence and paint him into the bad guy. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Good times, huh? Augustus didn't feel an ounce of guilt for making another child decide to live the rest of their lives in isolation among trash. When the Grinch came back to Whoville for the festivities, Augustus decided to rub salt in the wound by choosing that moment to propose to Martha. When everything was shown to be stolen on Christmas morning, Augustus was quick to round on Cindy Lou Who, calling her out before the community. He accused her of bringing all the misfortune to the town, as though Cindy could have had any clue that the Grinch was going to rob everyone. Taking out your frustration on a child is not a classy move in the least especially when you're meant to be a pillar of your town. Truly a scummy guy. It was incredibly satisfying to see Augustus finally called out by the Grinch and given a close shave in the process. 